Affordable laptops, I have not been reviewing a lot of them lately and you'll probably see why I haven't after the review of this model here. So it's called the DRE M11. It was sent out to me from a company called DH Gate. It arrived really quickly and the spec of this laptop has the Jasper Lake. So it's got the Sauron N5095 with its four cores. It's a 10 nanometer chip paired up with 12 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. It didn't sound too bad to me as a 15.6 inch affordable laptop. It didn't mention if it has an IPS screen, only that it's a full HD screen. And the build of it, metal in this red color as you can see. So is it a laptop that is okay? Well, that's what I'm here of course to find out and let you know. And a little bit of a spoiler here that uh, no, it's not one you want to be considering or shortlisting. And in fact, my review will probably help you want to avoid this model and you'll see why. So inside the box, apart from the laptop, we do actually get quite a few extras that they have included. So we've got the power supply for the M11, which is a two prong style. They include a cheap webcam. I'm not even going to test this out. It is the Deary or the Deary brand and a cheap mouse, a USB 2 hub, and this right here too, which is some stickers over the top of the keyboard there. They're in Spanish. And they even include a mouse pad for us and then our user manual. This color is their red. Now it is a red that at certain angles leans towards almost looking like pink, especially when we look at the keyboard, which we'll get onto shortly. So the top of the lid, this is made out of alloy. It has a matte finish to it. It's going to be very easy to scratch. It's a very soft alloy. So this is just a sticker right here. We should be able to pull that off without any problems at all. And lifting this up one-handed, no, you cannot do that. So you're gonna need both hands to do that. So keyboard layout here, full-sized keyboard, which is good. Now typing on it, the keys aren't too bad and pressing down, there really is no bounce and there's no flex in the middle. It's not a bad keyboard, but I wouldn't rate it as high quality. It still feels a little bit plasticky. Plastic keycaps, they do curve in slightly, ever so slightly, and you can see that we've got all our shortcuts there, screen, uh, scroll lock there, print screen button, dedicated one, and then full size arrow keys is good to see, and then our number keypad here too as well. The power button away, at least it's not right next to the delete key or where the delete key is with some units. Status LEDs at the top here for our power, battery life, and the caps lock. And yes, it is a backlit keyboard, so you can see right now, there are the keys lit up. Now, it's not that clear just around where some of the keys are, like enter here and shift. So, uneven distribution of that backlighting, but it is good that we do have at least the backlighting there with this keyboard. Our palm rest is made out of alloy again. And we do have a touchpad that is really quite large in size, but it's not really that good, okay? I find that the more sensitive movements, the cursor can sometimes lag a little bit, so you move, and it doesn't register quite as well as I would hope. It can be a little bit jumpy at times, so a frustrating touchpad. So the fingerprint reader, that's there, and it's good, and it is a Focal Tech brand one. And it seems to work okay, I don't really have any issues with that at least. Now it does have left and right clicky mouse buttons built within it. It does not rattle the touchpad, but I would certainly be using a mouse. Maybe that's why they gave us a mouse in the box because they know it's a poor touchpad. And you'll see here on the right, we have our microphone, which is kind of an odd location. On the right hand side, you see we have our DC in there for charging You can see that it doesn't quite line up perfectly that DC plug there, the bell plug, USB 3.0, HDMI, which is 2.0. So this does 4K 60 with the Jasper Lake and the UHD graphics. And then this is data USB 3.0 type C. So it's not type C that supports video out, unfortunately. And you can see they try to make it look a little bit slimmer here by doing this with the design. And how thick is it? Well, measuring right here is 19 millimeters, and the weight of it is 1.7 kilos for a 15.6 inch laptop. Weight-wise, it's actually not bad, and the thickness is, well, it's okay. It's definitely not as chunky as a gaming laptop, but it's no thin Ultrabook. And on the left, we've got Gigabit LAN, so that is good to have because you don't normally get that anymore. It does have Wi-Fi AC built into this, a combo 3.5 millimeter jack there, USB 3.0 again, and then an SD card reader. This is good to have, but it is only USB 2 speeds, this one. As I expected, it is slow, so it caps out about 24, 25, 
megabytes per second read and write. Then gaining access to the internals, which is something you don't have to do because we've already got our boot drive right there. That's all you can change because the RAM's not upgraded or replaceable and you'll see. Uh, you do have to remove, however, these two screws that are under that large rubber rear foot. Once you do that, this rear panel then, it should just lift off. Okay, like so, which is good. Ah, but there we go. You can see, of course, we've got room then to install a SATA 3 2.5 inch drive to screw that into place. So that's the only reason you'd really want to open this up here. Build quality looking, hmm, yeah, pretty average. A lot of tape around here holding down some of those cables. PCB quality doesn't seem super high end as you would expect. And you can see there's a fair amount of copper on here, which is good. Uh, now this one is configured as a 10 watt chip, the Sauron 5095. We are off to a bad start here when you take a look at the display. Now the website did state that it's just a full HD screen. That's it, they didn't say IPS. When they don't mention IPS, then you know it's probably gonna be a TN panel, which it is. Look at this, colors shift out and looks very washed out. You have to look at it directly. If you don't, it does not look great. And the brightness on it, okay, this full HD matte coated anti-glare panel, only 166 nits. That's crazy low, okay? 166 nits, full brightness I'm almost on right now is not good. We're not off to a very good start at all. Color coverage here, Adobe RGB of only just 42%. That is really poor, okay? And then NTSC of 40%, that's bad. And 56% sRGB. So a super low end, low grade, extremely poor panel that they've gone with in the M11 here. Moving over to screen capture now, it's just a little easier for me because that screen is not great to record. I've had a bit of difficulty doing that. And we can pick up on this a lot better too with the screen capture. You can see that when I bring up the start menu that it comes in a little bit laggy. Now it's not actually as bad as it looks here because it would be in 1080p. So this is maybe causing a little bit of that slowness there. And uh, it could be because I'm capturing too, but it's external capture card that is connected up to this. So under our device manager here, uh, you can see task manager, sorry, that RAM, we have a look at the memory. It is in dual channel and it is running at 2,933 megahertz, which is good. That's gonna help the UHD graphics. And we have 156 gigabytes dedicated to that 11th gen UHD graphics there from Intel. Now the M11, it does, if you look under system here, ship with Windows 10 Pro, okay? That's what it is, you need to run updates. However, Windows 11 support, I've just confirmed, and I'll do it again with the PC Health app, that it is not running, unfortunately, secure boot. So you see now when I check, uh-oh, this PC does not currently meet Windows 11 system requirements, so that means, Without a BIOS update to enable that secure boot, this is not going to be able to run Windows 11. So that is bad there, okay? Hopefully they can correct this. Now that drive I showed you before, the Kingfast SATA 3 spec SSD, 256 gigabytes. It's not amazing those speeds, but it's okay. I mean, it is SATA 3. So if we had PCI 3.0, that would be a lot better, a lot faster, perhaps a little bit more expensive. Would have been nice to have, but really with this chipset, I don't think it matters too much. So free space, 206 gigabytes is what you will find. And just to point out too, in our devices here with device manager, that the LAN port and the wireless is Realtek, okay? No, the adapter is actually, sorry, it's core chip, this one, which I've never seen before. Core chip adapter in there. Now this Realtek adapter, it's only about 320 megabits per second. Wireless 6 would have been better, so this is Wi-Fi 5 spec, wireless AC, but AX would have been better, but we do not have that. And our processor, you'll see it in here at Sauron, so the N5095. Maximum turbo single thread is 2.9 gigahertz, so it's a step up from the old Gemini Lake, and it does have now a 10 nanometer process. Instead of 14, Intel has finally moved away from the 14 nanometer process, even with these entry level system on a chip.
Geekbench 5, I ran this with the power connected. Of course, if it was just on battery, it would be a lot slower. So 639 single core score and just over 2000 multi-core score here. 15 watt processor, so it is a little bit faster than what we had previously, especially with those Gemini Lakes that were only configured to just six watts. It certainly has a little bit more headroom there with that power limit of 15 watts and the fan inside. So it's an okay score, but still very low end there. This is not a powerhouse of a laptop at all. Video playback, I have noticed now that with this Jasper Lake, you'd expect it to be, well, just as good as Gemini Lake, if not better, right? So a few stutters in the beginning, and it's still doing it. It's dropping frames here. So the performance, a little choppy. Now it is a super demanding file, HEVC, and the fact that it's a high bit rate too, 140 megabits per second and 10 bit. Now it's smooth but it does need around like seven, eight seconds to smooth out and then it's running fine. What about 4K60? This is another one of those demo clips that I always test out. Now this particular clip, you can see that it seems to be in slow motion a little bit. It's definitely, there we go, it's lagging. Okay, that's not running at 60 frames per second. Now it is, and then it's just, dropping frames like crazy and become choppy. So the video performance, not good. Now I don't really have anything in the background running at all. I've just got a spreadsheet here just to show you that this is really what this kind of laptop is ideal for is very light things. So documents, spreadsheets, Google, stuff like that, Chrome. Okay, you don't really wanna be taxing this because it's not a powerful laptop. It's for basic computing needs. Now onto our Chrome performance, looking at YouTube here, this is a 4K clip that's not even running in 4K yet and it is dropping frames, okay? So that's not a good sign at all to see this. Okay, that was in 1440p, so let's put it into 4K 60. Is it even gonna be out of hand? You can see that CPU is just maxing out at 100%. Memory is fine. Okay, but it's not even full screen at the moment. So I'll swap it over into full screen mode. And look at this, dropping a lot of frames. Oh yeah, that's constant. And the playback is choppy. So just like the video there, quite disappointing performance. Now I have updated to the latest Intel drivers. I've done all of that, got it from the Intel software update, the live update tool. And it's not that that's to blame. It's just that CPU is having a bit of trouble here playing such a demanding resolution through Chrome. Now in Edge, it would probably be quite a bit better. So I'll get out of this and just go into standard Google and have a look, a quick search and see how many tabs we can open and what kind of performance are we going to experience out of this particular spec. So taking a look here at cats and let's open up about, I normally run about 10 tabs. You're gonna to have to control that, not because of the RAM, not RAM managing, but really down to just those cores being maxed out. It's only a quad core. If it had eight threads, it would be a little bit better here. Now, that's okay, swapping between these tabs, that's fine. And I'll just scroll down here because there's an embedded video, and this was in the mini PC video too. You can see now, yeah, that feels choppy. Scrolling down, our CPU, Still maxed out, starting to drop down now to 50%, and then going through these tabs again. I think that performance now, I mean, this is, it's okay, but I wouldn't call it flawless. Definitely with the embedded videos and lots of content, lots of images, that scrolling is okay. But now with the images, some definite noticeable lags. You probably want to run really a few less tabs right here. This will be the only game I'll be testing on this spec here. So I'm going to run the lower resolution here. Not the lowest, but I mean 720p, that's pretty low there. Lowest possible visuals. And we'll take a look and see how the Dust 2 competitive map is going to run on this Jasper Lake. Here we go. So around 30 frames per second, I have seen it get down to 25. This performance is not amazing. Semi-playable here. I hope it sticks to more like 60 frames per second, but, oh, 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 oh. and yeah, I got killed anyway. Oh, down to 20. So not good for gaming. This Jasper Lake, even though, yes, it's 15 watts, this performance is 
very, very low end, as you can see. Finally, some good news, and that is it doesn't go over 66 degrees, and it pulls about 10 watts here, according to HW Info. Now I've been pushing it hard, benchmarking, gaming, and the fan does come on, you do hear it. It's not that loud, and it's not a hot chip either. It's only a 10 watt processor, so with that fan, these thermals are great. It does have quite a bit of copper in there, so that's one area they've actually done something decent. The rest of the laptop, however, well, yeah, if you've been watching, not so good. Okay, battery life, what is it like on this particular model? Well, it's not amazing. It's only a 38 watt hour battery, and you're looking at, I struggled to get over three hours with this with my general kind of work on it. So if you watch this video content, and you've got the brightness down, which is already low to start with, if you've got it even lower, uh, then yeah, you may be able to get a little bit more than that, but it's terrible, it's not good at all. So, Linux, that does actually work, no secure boot on here. I tested a live image, boot image of Linux Mint, it worked, uh, and hey, you won't be getting this laptop anyway, so I just thought I'd mention it, that I had actually tested it out. So true disappointment here, I thought it might be better than what it looked like on their website, but that is also what I'm here for. Not everything's gonna be amazing and a positive review, this certainly isn't, and now you know, of course, to completely review this, uh, to completely not consider it, and I wasted here quite a few days testing this out, which is very frustrating. So if you don't see any more Jasper Lake laptops or these affordable laptop reviews from me in the channel, and I just start focusing on products that I think are going to be good and start getting quite nitpicky and selective with what I agree to review. You know why? Because units like this are just a waste of your time, a waste of my time. Oh, and I can see with the lid here too now, this is a new thing. There is this stuck on bezel. Look, it's peeling off from the outside of the screen. Oh, wow. What a laptop. What a webcam that it's got in it too. Thank you for watching uh, this lemon of a laptop review here. And I'll see you hopefully in the next one with something a lot better than this model.